Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about interlocks on the Daikin ITM central controller, continuing the ITM series. In the last video, we talked about setting up a Wego and programming those third party devices onto the ITM for basic input output control. And in today's video, I'm going to show you a few more things you can do uh, with those devices, with those items in relation to maybe some of the VRV equipment. It's pretty cool. So we're going to jump in you guys, but if you do enjoy today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you guys haven't already and you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. All right, let's jump right in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to the desktop like we've been doing. And we're going to be playing around with something in the menu called interlocks. Now, before we do, I just want to make sure to do a quick little uh, brush up on what we talked about in the last video. In the last video, we created digital input and outputs and analog inputs and outputs. Basically, we created five points. We created a lighting input. We created an ERV on off command in, uh, output. We created an analog input for humidity that we had a humidity sensor that we wanted to hook up as well as an input for a temperature thermistor. And then we have a output going to a fan. So we have some things that we can now control that aren't necessarily part of the Daikin system. So when you go to set up an interlock, an interlock is basically a if then type of statement. If this device turns on, then I want this other device to do something else. If this device turns off, then I want that device over there to do something else. If this thermistor gets above a certain temperature, then I want this unit over here to switch to a certain mode of operation. So in today's video, I'm just going to kind of create a few scenarios where we interlock these devices. So back on our ITM from the main screen of your ITM to get to the interlock menu setup, you're going to click the menu button at the bottom, and then you're going to click on interlocking control. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new interlock. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create an interlock when the humidity and the temperature analog inputs from our Wego get above a certain amount. We're going to have an indoor unit on the Daikin VRV system that we created switch modes to cooling. So let's say we put an indoor unit into, I don't know, an application where humidity and temperature was sensitive. Maybe in that particular case, we do want heat sometimes, but if the humidity and temperature get above a certain threshold, then we want to override the operation and we want it to go into cooling. Now, this is kind of a hypothetical scenario because technically your indoor unit should be already monitoring its own temperature, but I digress. We're kind of just keeping this basic and making it up along the way. So we're going to click on create, and this is going to be our new interlock. So let's go ahead and let's call this, oh, I don't know. Let's call this, um, Let's say we have a, a particular room. So we'll just call this, uh, we'll call this the bay interlock. Maybe we have a unit out in the bay in the warehouse. I don't know. Again, we're making this stuff up as we go. So click whatever the program name is that you created, and we're going to go down to edit. So what we're going to now do is we're going to program the input. So this is like the if statement. If this happens, then the output happens. So first pick your input. So we click on modify. Now, before we grab anything from the available management point section, we need to tell it what type of an input is it? So is it a switch where we turn on or turn off something? Is it an error? So an alarm status of some kind? Is it an analog upper limit? So that humidity sensor that we created in the last episode where we programmed in, I think we programmed in like a 75% upper limit humidity, or maybe I think it was 70% is what it was. Or do we want operation mode? If something goes to a certain mode, we do that. Or do we just simply want to pick an analog value? You have a lot of things to choose from is where I'm going with this. Now, as far as the humidity sensor goes, 
the humidity sensor, actually, we, when we programmed it, we programmed it with a built-in alarm. If it gets above 70% humidity in the space, it's going to automatically alarm according to this upper limit that we programmed. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch our input status or condition to analog upper limit, and then we're going to grab our humidity sensor, move it over to the available input section. So basically, we're going to say if the humidity sensor hits the upper limit that we programmed into the management point itself. Okay, we can do that by going down to condition setup and basically saying that that condition turns on. So if the upper limit enables that point alarms, then we are going to go into this condition. So we say, okay. So if this happens, then something needs to happen, but we don't want to just use humidity. We also want to use temperature. So we're going to grab, go back to modify. We're going to grab another point here. This time we're going to grab analog value. And the reason we're going to grab analog value is because when we created this temperature point, we never created an upper analog limit. I was feeling lazy. I didn't want to. So we're going to grab that. We're going to move it over. And this time we're going to create a conditional setup. We're going to say that if the temperature of this analog value gets above a certain value, we're going to say if it gets above, how about we say if it gets above 25, because if you go back to the main screen of the ITM, because we don't have anything hooked up, it just says 32 because it's a default value because there's not actually a Wago hooked up. So to force this to occur based on the interlock, we're basically forcing the interlock to happen by arbitrarily changing this value. In the real world, we probably wouldn't say if it gets above 25, we'd probably say if it gets above 80 or something like that. Then you have to program in a hysteresis. And as discussed in the last video, this is basically your threshold or your dead band. So it would actually have to get above 25 plus two. So it'd have to get above 27. That would then enable this condition and the temperature would have to fall below 25 by two degrees. So 23 degrees before it then said, nope, this condition is not met. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to leave that there. We're going to say, okay. So now we have our two points. We're going to say, okay, our input is now complete. We've now created an input where we have these two points individually being monitored. Now we need to create our output status. So we have two options that we can do for outputs. The first one is just simply output one. We're going to click this drop down box and we're going to tell it what we want to monitor. We want to monitor if both the humidity upper limit is reached and the temperature is above 25 degrees plus or minus two, then something happens, which means that all inputs to the left become valid. If both of these happen, something else is going to happen over here. What is that something? We're going to click modify and now we're going to tell it this is what happens when both of those points are met. So let's say we just simply want to take an indoor unit. I don't know which indoor unit. Let's take 19. I like the number 19. We're going to say that indoor unit 19 is going to forcibly turn on, forcibly get cranked down to 65 degrees, and forcibly get put into the cool mode with the fan on high. This is just, again, an example. But basically what we're saying, we're going to say, OK, OK. What we're saying is if the humidity get, hits the upper limit, which we pre-programmed into this point as 70 percent and the temperature gets above 25 degrees, which in this particular case, we don't actually have one of these hooked up. So we're just pretending in the real world this would have been set up for something like 80. But we're saying, hey, if both of these inputs become valid, true statements, then we're going to tell indoor 19, whatever room that's in, to turn on, go to the cooling mode, crank the cooling down to 65 and put the fan speed on high. This is kind of like an emergency, like, oh my gosh, the room is getting way too hot. It's way too humid. We have a problem. And of course, I'm just making this scenario up, but you kind of get the point here. That's output one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create output two. We're going to say if at least one of these inputs becomes invalid. So maybe the humidity is warm, but the temperature is cold. If either one of these values becomes a false statement, 
then what do we want to happen? Well, we're going to go back to that unit 19. We're going to move it over and we're going to say, hey, if both of those conditions are not met, we'll leave it on, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to back off the set point. We're going to go ahead and make an adjustment to the heat set point. We're basically going to put this unit back into normal operating conditions. So we're going to put it back to dependent. Doesn't matter. We're going to put it back to whatever fan speed we wanted previously. Then we're going to hit OK. And now we have our entire interlock setup. So we have our inputs and then we have our two outputs. If both inputs become valid, we're going to crank that sucker down. If one of those inputs becomes invalid, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that unit back to normal operating procedure. Once we're done with that bay interlock, we're going to go ahead and hit enable. So <laughs> hopefully you guys are still with me. I tried to go slow and I know it's a lot of information. And I also tried to create a very simple yet multi-point value interlock all in one. And maybe that was just whoom, right above your guys' head. You might have to go back through and watch that again. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to create another interlock, but this time we're going to use an interlock with the fan speed. And again, I'm kind of making this up on the fly. So I apologize, apologize if some of these are maybe a little bit crazy or unrealistic, but I'm just trying to use the points that we created from the last video, which we also created on the fly into something that's usable, that's that's somewhat realistic, that you can at least follow along with and then program properly based on your application. So back on our ITM, we're going to go in and we're going to create another interlock. Now, what points do we still have to use? We need to use fan speed. We need to command on our ERV that we created and we need to look at the lighting. So those are the three points that we still have, two outputs and an input. So let's go ahead and let's create a new interlock and we're just gonna call this, ooh, let's call this occupied. Uh, that's too vague, that's too vague. Let's call this fan oc, uh, fan, fan oc. And I'm not good with names, but we're going to call this a fan awk. This is going to be a fan awk interlock. So <laughs> a fan awk interlock. So we're going to go to edit and we're going to start programming in the inputs. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to look at if the lighting turns on. So we're going to say that we're looking for a switch. Something is turning on. We're going to go down and look for our lighting. This is an input. We're going to move it over. And by default, it says switched on. So we don't actually need to go down to the condition setup. If we wanted to, we could, bam, there we go, on. If that contact closes and if the lights turn on, then we want to do something. What do we want to do? Okay, well, since we only have one input, we could technically say all inputs become valid or at least one input becomes valid. Either one of these will be fine. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to modify. And what do we want to happen when that lighting system turns on? Well, I think we want to turn the ERV on. Maybe it's the lighting in the bathroom and the ERV is exhausting air from the bathroom. So anytime the light is on, that means someone's in the pooper and we wanna exhaust that air out of there. So what we're gonna do if the lights turn on is we're gonna simply turn on the ERV. That seems like a pretty simple interlock. Output two then would be if all inputs become invalid, because again, there's only one, right? So you could technically say if at least one input becomes invalid. Usually when I'm turning things off though, I like to say, especially in this case, if all inputs become invalid, just solidifies this true statement here, or in this case, now it's false, modify, Go down to your ERV, move it over. Now we're going to turn it off. Hit OK, hit OK, and now we have created a somewhat more basic interlock, probably something I should have started with the first time around. But now we have our lighting. When the lighting turns on, right here, output one, the ERV turns on. When they're done taking a pooper, the lights turn off. Hopefully the lights are on an occupancy sensor and delayed 10 minutes so that it doesn't turn off the moment they leave. Otherwise it will still stink. But whenever this switch turns off, then the ERV turns off and then we go back after we hit OK and we enable that interlock. So we've now created 
two interlocks. The only thing we didn't use was the fan speed, which we could have created something for fan speed, but I think you guys get the point. Two totally different types of interlocks, one using multiple inputs with one output, and then one using a basic switched on input with a switched on output. But you guys, that's gonna be about everything for today's video. I really just wanted to show you the most basic interlock setup, some of the things you could do. You don't necessarily have to use Wago points for your interlocks. You could also interlock regular Daikin VAM ERVs to Daikin VRV indoor units. I mean, you can kind of get creative here with other devices and whatnot. Really just wanted to show you the basics on how to set up the interlock. So I hope you guys have found this information helpful. If you have, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. If you guys haven't already and you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. You guys, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I read all of your guys' comments. I always do my best to respond and answer your guys' questions as well. Of course, channel members are going to get priority response to their questions and comments. If you guys want to become a channel member, it's a great way to support the channel, and I greatly appreciate all of your guys' support. There's a ton of energy and time that goes into making all of this content for you guys. Joining is easy. Simply click on the join button. It's right next to the subscribe button on the main channel page. There are four channel membership tiers to choose from, all with unique perks. Simply click on the membership tier you want to join. You guys, I simply appreciate you tuning in and watching the content. So you guys, thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you all have an awesome day.